So if you're new to my channel, I love emails. Emails are probably really boring, but emails make you money. So if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, and you like making money, this video is for you. Today, I'm going to walk you through a couple steps on how to use your email marketing software. Mine is I prefer MailerLite, but you can do this in MailChimp, ActiveCampaign, whatever you have. And I'm going to walk you through how to set up a form to get you more email opt-ins, more leads, and of course, more customers. So you ready? Let's get started. Hey there, my name is Brad Smith, owner of Automation Links. And over the last eight years, I've helped over 2,500 people grow and scale their business. And I like to share my screen. <laughs> when I share my screen, it's able to walk you through the exact steps I would take to do this stuff. Now, this stuff is complicated. If you're a business owner, you're probably busy. So how can we make this not so complicated for you and just give you the quick tips on how to set this up? And of course, if you don't want to set this up yourself, you can just hire us or reach out to me and we'll do it for you. So let's get started. Setting up forms, pop-ups, embed forms, different things into your website so we get more email subscribers. So in my software that I like using here is MailerLite. Now, really, essentially, when you get into any of these email marketing softwares, they're the same, right? So the first thing we want to look for are, are forms. And I'm going to go ahead and click on forms here. Multiple different ways you can set up forms. You can set up pop-up forms, embed forms, and different promotions. Today, let's start with a pop-up. This is a good way to get somebody to subscribe when they first come to your website. I'm just going to call it test, and you'll see that it gives you those options again for a pop-up or something you can just put in a landing page. Save and continue. Now, usually in these email marketing softwares, they, of course, let you choose the subscriber group. You can always go back and change this later on. But they give you also templates. Templates really help you get started so you're not having to start from scratch and also give you some cool ideas. Like, did you know that you could put a pop-up form just in the bottom right? Or that you could have the whole right side of your page with a slider? Or you can just put it right in the middle, right? So what you can do is simply click on preview and you'll be able to see all these different previews. And hey, this one's perfect. I can change the colors. I can change the text. I can add a countdown timer. Or once you get in here, you can just go ahead and delete these. So I like something like this, where it actually will give you an image to use, but the image isn't the goal. The form is the goal. So you could use something like this, but there's also multiple different options if you want to keep it really subtle um, and just put it in the bottom right, like where a live chat would go. Feel free to use something like this. Super easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my favorite, which would be this one right here. And let's get started in there. Now, the nice thing about using this in your email marketing software instead of another app is you don't have to integrate anything. So this is already integrated with your groups and your audience list in MailerLite, which is really key. So all you have to do is simply click around and you can start seeing the different options with the, the border. If you click this, you can feel free to test the form and then you can go change the headings, the size, the colors, etc., the links, whatever you want to put there. It also gives you a nice text editor as well. Now, when you click on this, you can go ahead and hit save. And now you're in the full form. You're going to want to switch that image out. So that's where you're going to click on the sidebar background. And you can feel free to just switch this image out with any image from your computer. Or if you have one already saved in here, it'll click on that. From there, you can also do stuff like this. I don't know why they added that text, but feel free to go ahead and delete that because it's really not needed there. And then when you click on the form, you can click on the pencil. And this is exactly how you're going to start filling that out. I usually like putting the name above the email. So all you got to do is slide that up and you can also add more fields. So let's say you want to do first name, last name, and email. Go ahead and go through. You want to edit this. So it says name, and then you can go ahead and edit the first name and hit save. So now you've got first name, last name, and email. And of course, you can always go and add more fields. Um, they give you a full list here that you can choose from company, phone, state. Now, if you don't have a field in there, maybe you want to ask somebody what their website is or what their favorite color is, you can go add those fields back in MailerLite. So you'll want to go back to the dashboard. You'll want to add a field, a custom field. And then when you come back here, it'll be added to this drop down list. So that's going to be it for the fields. So I don't want that. I'm going to go ahead and go back. I'm going to delete it. First, I got to save it. Then I can delete it. All right, so next is we want to be able to edit that, that button. So that's where we're going to come back here. We're going to scroll down to the success message, get my discount. Here we go. Uh, sign up, something like that. 
And then from there, you want to go change all the colors. So maybe you don't want the color black. You want to change it blue. Boom. Now it's blue. Perfect. Um, you can change the text in here. You can change the label colors, checkbox description if you add a check checkbox in there. And that's pretty much it. You can go through and just make, make actions here. Now, what I want you to do is look for the bu button action. What happens after somebody clicks that button and opts in? So you can give them a success message where you're going to be able to go edit right here, or you can redirect them to another link, maybe a thank you page or a different page on your website, especially if you're adding some sort of coupon code here. After they do that, if you're in Shopify, you can make a clickable coupon code and it'll automatically add that code to their cart, make it easy for them, or you can redirect them to the collection page or to really whatever page you want there. All right, so once we do that, if you do want to set up the success page, you can go ahead and here, and it's the same thing. Edit, 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 pretty much the same thing as the pop-up page. All right, so now your form's done. Now what? You're going to click. I always like to preview it just to make sure, hey, this looks cool. Um, if you have anyone on your team, you can copy the URL, send that to them, get their thumbs up and approval, and go ahead and exit out. Now, if you ever want to get rid of the mailer light pop-up or uh, branding here, you just have to upgrade to their $10 a month plan. And they'll go ahead and remove that for you in the settings. Now, here's some other things. We don't want to annoy people when they come to your website. So usually I like saying don't set it, don't show it until about 30 seconds after. Because as soon as your website loads and then a pop-up loads, it's really annoying. People will leave. You can also, instead of waiting, you can say, hey, if they scroll halfway down my website, then you can show this. You can also set that to whatever percentage you want. You can also change it to um, a close. So they don't see the pop up at all until they go to this URL. When they go to close and go to another page, then the pop up shows. So the, that works really well. Frequency means how often. So let's say I see the pop up today. You don't want me to see the pop up again every time I come back to your website because, of course, it'll be annoying, especially if I signed up. So you want to set it to about a month. You can go ahead and change that to whatever setting you want. And you can also add a schedule. So maybe you only want to set it for Black Friday. Um, or if you want to set it to certain times a day, you can go ahead and do that. Um, a couple of other options. I say don't show it on your product pages. That person's interested in your products. They're looking at your products. Don't annoy them with a pop-up. Give them the pop-up on the other pages. But if they're on your product page, let them do their shopping and do their research. You can go ahead and copy the URL. If you have multiple products, you want to do something like your website.com forward slash product or whatever that URL is before the product link comes in. That way they don't, you don't have to put in for every single product. I'll show, show you an example. So for ours, ours is automationlinks.store. And when we go to one of the products here, um, something like high converting landing page, you're going to see that my URL is this. So I actually don't have to do the ending. I can just go ahead and do here. And it'll show anything that has a product in it. It won't show the pop-up. I'll hide it on that. Super key. You also want to go back and make sure it looks good on all the different devices. And then when you're done, hit save. You're ready to go. Last but not least, we need to add some tracking. So what we need to do is actually head, add this to the head section of your website. Um, super easy to do. So you, what you want to do is copy this. If you're using WordPress or Shopify, they give you the instructions here. Um, but I'm using a, our site builder called Duda. I like going in the SEO and settings, head HTML, and then you go ahead and go down and you paste that script in, save it, republish, and now that pop-up should start showing. So that is going to be it for that. Let's hit continue and we should be good. With You'll be able to come back and see all the stats and analytics and see 100 people visited my website and 10 people opted in. I'd say that's a pretty good conversion rate. If you have 1,000 people to your site and only one person opted in, Let's think about redoing and remaking that form because nobody likes it, right? Um, some other things you want to think about is a double opt-in. Should you make people double opt-in? It's up to you. Um, I usually say no. I shut that off. They signed up for the form. Why am I making them do two extra steps? Um, but totally up to you if you want to really make sure they confirm their email there. You can even go and edit that email. So that confirmation email, you can see is pretty plain here. But feel free to go edit that and make it your own language, add your logo, and add your information. So if this video is bringing you any value and helpful with your marketing automation, love it if you subscribe, gave me the thumbs up, and left me a comment, maybe new if you're new to my channel, or your website link so I can go check out what you've got going on in your business, and I'll try to support you in any way. That's what we do. We help people automate their marketing. All right, the next thing we want to cover is embedding a form. This is really good if you're doing a landing page, a uh, lead magnet, 
That way you can just go embed the form in that page and you don't have to use Zapier or any connections to make sure those work. All right, let's dive into that. All right, now that we're back to forms, you're gonna go ahead and create form again. We've got our pop-up set. So now it's time to do an embedded form. Pretty much the same thing. Let's call it test again and save and continue. This is gonna give you a nice script that you can go put in your lead magnet page. Go ahead and choose your audience here, uh, your landing page. And like I mentioned, it's just so you can, you don't have to worry about all the crazy integrations. So I usually like to do all the text and all the colors and the branding on the actual landing page that I'm making. So we really don't need these. We can go ahead and delete that. And now we just have the form that will embed into the site. From there, you can go ahead and start adding those fields exactly like we did on the pop-up. But then I like to add some customization and get rid of all these colors because if we're just embedding it in the site, your site should already have the color set. So I'll go ahead and just make these white. Then you'll want to go ahead and do the form background and make that white as well. You want to make it the exact same color code as the color code in the, of the background of your landing page. So it blends in nicely and looks good there. Feel free to change the headings, the text, the button color again, like I showed you before. They even allow you to do different things like the hover. You can make it, you know, whatever color you want there. Um, feel free to go ahead and edit all the text, subscribe, um, just like the pop-up. Same thing with this. You can also add the success message. So you can go to settings here. You can go to, they've got all kinds of things, confirmation, make sure you want to really opt in. And then this is where you can add that redirect URL just in a little bit different place than your pop-up. You can redirect them to another page, or you can give them a success message here and give them a call to action. This one's pretty limited. They don't allow you to add a button uh, or anything like that, but you can add a link by using this if you wanted to add a link. Uh, usually what I like to do on a subscribe form is if you want them to go to a thank you page, let's go ahead and send them to a redirect page and redirect them after they fill out the form. That way you can say, hey, thanks for filling out the form. Check out my product and my course or my business down below and take it from there. So that's pretty much it for this. Once it's all designed, click on done editing. And you're going to be able to go ahead and go through and you're going to see that code. So now this code should already be in your site. So if you're doing the pop-up, you only need to put this code in your website once. So whether you're using a pop-up or embed form, put that in the head code one time. But then this is the code. As long as this code is in your head code, you're going to go copy this and you're going to go paste it in your site. So if I was in my website here, I would scroll down. I would add an HTML feature. So you could add something like right there. You're going to paste that code in. And then that's where your pop-up form will actually show as long as you have the other code in your head section. From there, you can go ahead and make sure that you preview it, make sure it looks good, and then go through the double opt-in again, make sure that's set, and go through some automations, maybe connect your email automation there, um, and then come back and check your analytics. So that is pretty much it for the forms. Hopefully that helped. And of course, if you need any help setting up your forms or your marketing automation, let me know. But other than that, it'd be awesome for you to subscribe and to stay in touch with me. And of course, let me know if you have any questions or need any help. Hope you have a great day and I will see you on the next video. Hmm. Forgot to turn my lights on and forgot to hit record. So I had to do this twice. Maybe I'll do better next time. Should I turn my lights on or just have a nice tan?